Hey guys, it's Andy. Uh, we're back here for December 2023's production updates. We got a lot of stuff happening in November, so we'll go through and share them. Before we get started, make sure to check out our um, production updates on the website. Uh, we post everything on the blog. A lot of times we'll have more information. And if I forget anything or forget to mention something, we'll write stuff there. So make sure to do that. And we also have a mailing list um, where there's a link on the blog as well. So feel free to subscribe to it if you want the news sent directly to your inbox. November, I turned 27. So I'm uh, a little bit older, a little bit wiser. Um, so that was uh, interesting. First things first, uh, at the end of December, we'll have our typical holiday break. This year, it'll be from December 21st, uh, sorry, December 23rd to January 1st. We'll have our holiday party on December 22nd during workday. So we might be a little bit, you know, quiet during that time. I'll be at the office a little bit to kind of like work on some stuff. I usually take like that week to uh, reset some things. And then sometimes I'll, I'll usually take my break after people come back because it's cheaper to do vacation when it's not so busy. We're also continuing to move. We have most of the racking taken down in this building right now. We're still at uh, 372 King Street North, but uh, come Thursday and Friday this week, everything will get moved over to the new building and then we'll start our work day, uh, basically all of us in the new building. We'll have to do a little bit more construction here to bring it back to what it was before. And then when it was full, the space feels really small. But when you take everything out, it looks a lot bigger. So yeah, it's kind of funny to look back in the last five years while we've been in this building, how much we've expanded. Because when we first moved in, we were using up about 2,000 square feet of space, which was just this corner here and then all the way to the back. But now we've taken over the whole building, which is about 8,000-ish square feet, maybe a little more, including the backspace. I'm excited to start the next part of the journey. It's also snowing today, which is like the first major snow of the season. We do have video on our blog as well as on our website and our uh, YouTube about the big move. And we'll probably put out some new videos to show everyone the space, do a little bit of a tour probably later down the line, maybe in the new year. So keep an eye out for that. Uh, Long Mill Mark II orders and the extension kits, they're shipping out smoothly. The only thing that's kind of holding us up is the bristles for the uh, dust shoe. There was a bit of a mix up in the accounting and their, uh, for the production down in the States for the bristles. They, are supposed to, they were supposed to arrive today, but because of the weather being bad, it might show up tomorrow. I think there's about two dozen people waiting on the shoe since last week, but we should get them sent out pretty quickly. And I think we have enough stock piled up so that the wait time isn't so long. Vortex and laser beam um, orders are continuing to ship. We have about 15 uh, vortexes left, so they'll probably last the next week or two. Uh, we have a new batch of parts on the way here to build the next 300 units, um, which will probably be start We'll get the last batch of parts probably at the end of December or at the start of January. So we're probably looking at roughly start of the year to start shipping out into the second batch. Uh, there aren't any major changes to the new Vortex, so nothing to report back on that. Super Longboard development is chugging away at an incredible pace. Uh, Chris has been in the back shop testing for the last couple of weeks. We're waiting on the, the third version of the prototype boards, which should ship in the next two weeks. And then we'll do the testing here and um, make sure that all the hardware is good before we do the full um, production. We have the, east, the new e-stops, uh, which come with the macro buttons, as well as the case and the panels in manufacturing uh, now. That'll probably be ready in the next couple weeks, and then we'll figure out the shipping part. So yeah, we're excited for the new case. Those will be made of completely out of metal, similar to the ones that we have now. The e-stops are gonna be really cool because you not only do you have the, the oops button, if people are familiar, but they also have built-in macro buttons you can program. So you can make the machine do like, perform a certain function like homing or uh, going to a certain spot or like turning on and off a, f a feature on the machine and so on and so forth. So that's going to be uh, coming out soon. We have the launch date for the super long board planned for December 4th. 
there is a video out that kind of explains everything as well as the product page where you can sign up for our mailing list. So make sure to check that out. So today is uh, November 28th. We posted the video for the Super Longboard launch yesterday. I think we have over 1,500 views in the last 20, less than 24 hours, which is pretty fast for um, our YouTube channel. It seems like people are pretty excited. We also put out an alt mill update uh, a video last week. We explained what the alt mill is, what sort of changes there are from the, when we first started the project, and what sort of like launch and production we're planning to do. So, general, uh, just like overview. We're in the process of building 50 alt mills. We don't have them for sale yet. There's a couple of things up in the air we're trying to decide on, but we do have a survey if you're interested in ordering one. Um, it look, we already have over 50 responses and half of them, half of the response are like, oh, I want to order the machine like right away. And the other half is like, oh, I'll wait till like the first prototype comes out. But basically the idea was we wanted to know if people would buy, like, we don't have the fully working prototype yet, but for as a business, if people are gonna give us money sooner, it's kind of better because we can like build a bigger batch and they'll save money and yada, yada, yada. I, you can read the blog and you can read, uh, watch the video about us explaining this, but our initial like expectations for the response for the alt mill was thinking like, oh, if we can sell like 15 to 20 alt mills every month, um, that would be like really good. But now based on the response and just like even given the lack of like stuff that we have available for people to see, I feel pretty confident that we'll be able to clear out the first batch within the month, maybe even less. I'm excited for that. Um, we're slowly ramping up like getting more engineering help. Patrick and Daniel are conducting interviews for hiring a new engineer and we also are working with the university to bring on some students for the new year as well to kind of speed up the CO2, the alt mill, the router, like all of the development projects. This, this end of the year has been really crazy because we have so many development projects in progress. So we're trying to fill that out. And obviously we have the new building as well. So we can all fit everybody in, inside now. So really excited for that. CNC router project. So. Uh, just a quick recap, as most people know, we use the Makita RT0701 um, as like the main router for cutting stuff on the long mill. And a lot of other companies do the same thing. In the past two years, we found there's a lot of issues with the routers. Uh, one being like the bearings are overheating really fast. The price of the router itself has gone up a lot over the last couple of years as well. We actually had a product manager from Makita come to our office yesterday to ask us some questions about our testing data for the Makitas as well. Um, we found that the bearings, there must have been like a supply change on the bearings at some point during the pandemic, um, causing the, the seal to create more friction and causing the bearings to overheat. It doesn't affect everyone and it doesn't affect most people when you have like a thousand, couple thousand Makitas being shipped out every year, you know, it kind of adds up. We've been playing around with uh, using like the, say, this is like the Makita taking apart the, the rotor. Cause initially we were thinking, okay, we'll like modify a Makita to be like the Makita alternative. But then we started playing around, we started doing research on brushless DC motors uh, because we took apart uh, Dewalt angle grinder that uses um, brushless DC motor. So if you're not familiar with brushless DC motors, it's in the name, they use direct current, but it's sort of like a VF uh, three phase spindle where um, by controlling th uh, the, the coils between three different poles, you can cause the motors to rotate. The main thing is that you need to use direct current for powering the motor, which means that you need some sort of power supply rectify circuit or like some way to turn uh, AC current from the wall into DC. And uh, that was like, really the big problem is like, they don't make power supplies, like make, getting the power supplies kind of expensive for higher power levels, like above 500 Watts. Obviously they are, they do exist. They're just like pretty expensive, probably like above $50. 
So already like half the cost of a Makita, uh, essentially. So it wasn't really on our radar just because of the cost factor. Um, but we found that it is possible to design a higher voltage brushless DC motor that can run off rectified AC current so that um, clean DC power source because um, it's like rectified, but there's like circuitry that can clean it up and use it straight off the wall. So we've been exploring more into that. Um, we've also like found some other ways to get power supplies for less money uh, for DC because a lot of um, brushless DC motors, they'll use uh, like 48 volts or 36 volts, especially for like electric scooters or electric skateboards um, and RC use. And they're super, super powerful, super power dense. We've like have some different ideas on how to adapt the technology. But the benefits of using brushless DC is that one, they're more quiet. They're similar to like spindle. Uh, the second is that they run much more efficiently, like in the 80 to 90% range. With the AC motors that we are looking at, the universal AC motors that are used for power tools, they are like in the 50% roughly range of efficiency, which means that for a thousand watt motor, 500 watts of that is just getting ejected as heat, which is an enormous amount of heat. That's why there's such a big fan attached to these rotors and of, like the fan adds noise and the heat means that we have to engineer it to like dissipate a lot of that heat. Whereas with the brushless DC, you know, you're only expelling like 20% and you don't need the motor to be so powerful because it's more efficient. So um, that's like a big benefit. And the, 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 the controls for moving the motor are a lot more advanced. So we feel like we can build some of the drivers and the circuitry to take advantage of uh, a couple different other factors, like um, being able to have a bigger speed range. Building a brushless DC motor to run really fast, like rotationally, is a little bit harder. Um, I think partially because of the windings are wider, so there's more inertia at the outer ends and um, the motor can pull itself apart at high RPMs. On the low end, it can go a lot slower. Some drivers, like driver motor combinations, you can run it like pretty much at zero RPM, like you can start at zero RPM. So you almost have like an infinite speed range. So there's like different ideas that we have, like being able to do tool changes um, automatically by using like not having to rotate the motor and having control exact. It's like a stepper motor almost like it's like a really like a there's a it's a three pole stepper motor almost where it can like hold its position and like you can rotate it and like undo things as well. So that's like a pretty cool part of brushless DC motors. And um, oh yeah, uh, also there's no brushes, so they don't need to be replaced either. So we're working on that. The uh, laser, CO2 laser team is doing filming today to kind of share more about the project. We just ordered a new uh, CO2 laser as well for production. So I think the plan is to take our old one, take it apart for R&D. And uh, yeah, we'll go from there. Uh, Ron, who is our 3D print manager, he's starting to set up some of the print, uh, 3D printing with uh, input shaping. Well, here he gave me this sample here. There's a dust shoe. It looks like it's bringing down the print speed by about 20, sorry, bringing up the print speed by about 20% so we can print a lot more parts than before. In combination with that, we're also doing more, uh, we're doing more injection molding. So we're still waiting on the injection molded uh, feet for the long mill, uh, but those should be done pretty soon. And what that means is that we can pull back about 30 to 40% of a printing on the print farm uh, by shifting over to injection molded feet, which will free up more time to do the uh, other parts like the laser beam uh, cases as well as the dust shoes. Um, so we can scale up production a little bit better on that. And um, yeah, once we start building out more products and we need more to be printing, uh, it clears up some capacity there as well. So Mike's bought, so not, we also have a, tip, uh, a thing called a tip grant, which helps like pay for uh, part of things that we need for R&D and production use. Um, and so we got that grant for the laser as well as CNC mill. Mike's just won an auction on buying a mill. So we'll probably see a new mill coming into the new shop in the next couple of weeks as well as we have the laser. Yeah, I think that's pretty much it that I can think of. But obviously, read the blog. 
that's been our December 2023 production update, and we will catch you next time.